What is going on guys? So today we're going to be going over my updated Magicka Nightblade build for the Deadlands DLC. Now let me go right out and say Magblade is definitely a lot better than it has been in the past. It's not top top tier like a Stamblade or something like that, but it's definitely a lot stronger than it has been. The survivability was the biggest problem on Magblade and that has been pretty much resolved to a certain extent. Uh, but what kind of falls short is the damage. Now, if everything lines up together on this build, you can do some insane burst, but everything has to align together, kind of. And it's all the stars have to align. Uh, they have to not CC break or, or hit some type of lag. But you still can kill people. It's just not going to be as good as a stand blade. Uh, nothing really holds a candle to the stand blade for outnumbered 1VX right now. Uh, it's just like above head and shoulders above every other class, in my opinion. But if you do love Magblade, this is one of the strongest specs I've played in quite a long time. So in this video, we'll cover all the typical topics like gear, skills, champion points, and much more. Obviously, to understand this build fully, please be sure to watch the whole video. Timestamps will be down below if you guys want to skip ahead, as well as other important links. But before we get started with the build, if you guys are enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe. It's free, and you never miss an upload. Also, if this video helps you anyway, don't forget to smash that like button. Without further ado, let's get right into the build. So for my race, I went with the Breton. I think Breton's the best race for me right now, uh, at least on the Magblade. It's been a while since I played it. The sustain feels definitely very strong. You could go a uh, high elf here. You could go, you know, dark elf, whatever you prefer. But I think Breton is probably the best choice for me, especially since magic DKs are all are all over the place, and you really need this spell resistance buff because you are a vampire and you're going to take a ton of damage. So this will definitely help you uh, kind of survive a little bit. So Breton is my top pick. You can make this work on a Khajiit or whatever, but Breton is, is by far the best. Now for my Mundus Stone, we are using the Atronach Mundus Stone. Uh, it's really a no-brainer. You really need recovery on Mag Blades and, and Magic Builds in general. So the Atronach is definitely one of the best choices. I would not run any other Mundus Stone except for maybe the Lover uh, or even maybe the Critical Chance could be decent. But I think the Atro is just a solid choice you can always adjust your jewelry traits around if you want a little bit more damage or sustain. But the Atro, it's by far one of the best in the slot Monday stones out there. For my food and consumables and potions and stuff, uh, Be With Sugar Skulls is a staple on mag builds. And you really, you really need this max stats. It's very nice to have a lot of stamina with, with this and also get your health up pretty decently as well. For my potions, we are using either tripods or these new pots right here um, that I've been really liking actually. So this gives a movability, uh, prophecy, and magicka. So what this does, as a short explanation, the prophecy is very valuable. Maybe not for the damage, but for the healing potential. This is what makes us very tanky. As we have a decent amount of spell critical, so we can get those big critical heals, especially with the new uh, buffed whatever that skill is called. I don't I don't remember, but the new burst heal. Uh, when that thing creates a hitting for 13 to 14k easy uh, in PvP, especially when you're near a keep and you have the minor mending buff and major mending, it can even hit higher than that. So I really recommend these pots. Uh, you have plenty of stamina sustain uh, on the spec. You really don't have to use tripods because we have so much max stamina. Uh, we are a vampire. I think vampire is a must uh, for the mag blade. Uh, you really need this on death passive. It really helps you survive, especially DKs. They are all over the place. The dots hurt and you really sometimes if you're getting pressured, you're sitting at good mitigation range for taking advantage of this on death. You have good mitigation and overall healing potential with Dark Cloak and the new uh, Burst Heal and Rapid Regen. So. so let's talk about a few changes to the Mag Blade before we get into the gear. I think this is very important. Uh, they adjusted Merciless Resolve to give weapon damage uh, as you gain stacks rather than critical damage and critical healing done, which is definitely noticeable to your overall weapon and spell damage numbers. Uh, this gives, I guess, about close to 300 uh, weapon and spell damage at five stacks. Um, and then other big thing here is the healthy offering. Now they got a new burst heal. I recommend this morph. Um, this thing is great. Okay, like, let me tell you, uh, you will survive a lot more now on the mag blade. You don't have to run any defensive sets really at all. And your overall survivability has shot through the roof. This you you are almost a tank at this point, uh, with how much healing potential we have. So this is a big buff to mag blades for overall defensive stuff. 
So that's kind of what's changed on the Nightblade in a nutshell. Nothing really else has, has really adjusted other than, than the critical damage cap of really 125%, but we really don't take advantage of that anyways. So we, we don't even have to worry about that, to be honest. Um, so that's pretty much all for the things that's changed. Um, so here's my unbuff stat sheet. Uh, we have great overall stats, 64 points into magic, zero points into health. And uh, that's pretty much all for our unbuff stats. Let's go into the gear. So we have Calrian, so this is a no-brainer. Um, Learn Hone, main hand, sharp and offhand. Shock on the main and disease on the uh, on the offhand. Uh, definitely best in slot in my opinion. Uh, if you guys don't know what Calrian like, does, then you probably live under a rock. This is one of the best proc sets right now in the game. So you have to deal critical damage with a lot of heavy attack. And that launches a projectile and it's kind of delayed. So it was like a one second delay. So it can time up well with uh, other burst skills that you have. Um, alternatives, you could try Warm Maiden. You can try Spinners. But I think you're going to get a lot more value from a proc set like Calrians, especially with our back bar set uh, with Clever Alchemist, as this will scale up our Calrians proc quite a bit. So you can try Warm Maiden and, and Spinners. Those are good alternatives if you don't have Calrians, but I highly recommend you try to get it because it will make a big difference in your overall kill potential because burst is king in pvp we all know that so you have to kill your the, the person that you're fighting uh, faster than they kill you that's kind of how pvp works so people may call me toxic for using calories but i'm just using the tools available um, to kill 40k health people um, as their 50 60 percent of people in pvp are healers so i'm going to use every tool i can to be able to kill them um, Clever Alchemist is just a no-brainer on the Magblade. Uh, you have plenty enough sustain. I was kind of worried about my sustain when I tested this a little bit. But Clever Alchemist is just fine, man. You have plenty of sustain on this Magblade spec. You could definitely even drop some of the sustain that we have to get a little bit more damage. But we're going to go over that here in a minute. But basically, when you pop a potion on your back bar, you gain a rush of energy, uh, giving you 659 weapon spell damage. If it's gold, it's going to be a little bit more. Um, but yeah, this is one of the best back bar sets in the game For our monster set a good old magma incarnate. This is definitely the best monster set for magblade out there This gives you weapon and spell damage. It gives you armor and it gives you recovery on the one and the two piece Love this. I absolutely love this set It's best in slot on a lot of builds right now and it, you just really can't get away from it uh, We are using one piece training and then we're using a one piece of death dealers now this mythic is definitely best in slot for the Magblade, in my opinion, um, as it really helps with your healing. It helps with your uh, overall sustain, giving you more max stats. It's just a really great mythic for the Magblade, as you know, some of their heals are based off the maximum health. So the more health that they get, the overall more healing that they get from those skills. Definitely uh, a must, in my opinion, on the Magblade. So for traits on my gear and all that, we are using. Uh, we actually have one medium, and we have three heavy on the chest the shoulders and the legs and then we have three lights and then we have one medium on the head now traits i'm kind of liking a little bit of well fitted i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of been adapting my build a little bit around i probably would go three well fitted three m pin one reinforced that's kind of my ideal spec kind of in my head but right now we have two well fitted and four uh m pin and one reinforced it's up to you I don't really what you like here, but I think these are pretty good staples. Even sturdy could be pretty decent as well. But I really like uh, this kind of spec that I'm using. Definitely want to have one more well fitted though. That that would kind of round up round about the build and give us a lot more sustain on our stamina pool. So for enchants, all tri stats if you can get them. If you cannot afford all tri stats, then just go tri stat glyphs on the big pieces, the head, chest, and legs and go magicka on the small pieces that's going to be the shoulders the the waist the hands and the feet but you're going to be better off going all tri stat it's actually free resources if you guys didn't know that or not uh, running full tri stat is actually you get free offset resources so our stamina is going to be higher uh, because we're using tri stat our magicka will be a little bit lower but it's honestly not too bad um as you've seen with our overall max magic pool so overall uh, that's the build um, for enchants on the jewelry. We are using one infused recovery and two swift uh, with spell damage. You could change this out. Obviously, you could go a infused spell damage with a base recovery. But this is just what I've been liking right now. I'm definitely going to adjust down my recovery as I get more in tune with the mag blade. 
because it's been a little bit since I played it, but this is definitely one of the most fun specs I played. It was very reliable uh, for overall PvP. Now, if you guys want to watch a whole stream of me playing this build, I will link it right here, but I am going to show some gameplay uh, after, you know, I'll go over the build a little bit later. So that's all for the gear. Um, the gear is pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. So for our skills, we are using degeneration on our front bar. This is your major horse ray buff. This just gives you a little bit more spell damage and it gives a little bit of a nice dot. Now for skills, this is where things can get kind of adjusted and altered. Siphoning attacks could go on your front bar or your back bar. Um, it just depends on what your preferences are. I've been enjoying Dark Cloak on front bar if I'm using Tether because you have to use one siphoning skill on your front bar to take advantage of this magical flood passive. So it's preference on what you like, but I kind of like end cap right now. So I'm definitely going to have to run some sort of siphoning skill on my front bar, whether that's going to be crippling grasp, sap essence, something like that. We could definitely drop sap essence for degen. Um, it, it's really a preference on what you like. Um, the mag blade is very versatile for really any kind of play style. It's a lot of preferences, honestly, on what you really like. But this is kind of what I've been running uh, right now. I do swap in between Soul Tether and End Cap quite a bit, like often, because sometimes I feel like I need Soul Tether and sometimes I feel like I need End Cap, but both uh, kind of work pretty well. End Cap is more single target, obviously, and Tether is more AOE. But Siphon Attacks, um, either bar you put it on, it's very good. You know, you definitely want this, as it really helps with your overall sustain. Uh, Reaper's Mark, this is your flex spot. I've found more value in this than I did, like Crippling Grasp. Or even, you know, another uh, skill like the um, Soul Trap. You know, you could run something like that if you wanted to. Or even Inner Light could be decent. But I just found more value in Reaper's Mark as it gives me a heal if they die. Plus, it also gives me minor or major Berserk and it gives them a uh, major Breach, giving them 6,000 less armor. So it's overall one of the better skills I, I guess you could put put here i would like to definitely have more delayed burst but there's really no other options so this is the best that we have honestly and i, I think it works pretty well especially when you're fighting somebody squishy and they die you get a pretty decent heal so i definitely like this uh skill here it's it's okay it's not amazing but it's definitely uh pretty decent so for your kind of your delayed burst it's going to be merciless resolve you're going to use this skill quite a bit often like to kill people uh in conjunction with concealed weapon this is very good trust me you really want to get and learn how to use this skill um i have trouble sometimes keeping it up because i, I haven't played this class in a while but this is definitely a, a very good skill once you really learn how to use it it's very strong and you can really hit some hard hitting burst with the end cap into a merciless resolve proc into a concealed weapon you're basically doing a one-shot combo with your calories and all of that to really burst people that's in a nutshell how you play magblade is just overall insane burst. Concealed weapon is your main stun and also is your main spammable. So it definitely is, is nice in the toolkit overall to not have to actually use a, a stun like uh, mass hysteria. So we can have our offensive stun with concealed weapon and uh, you know, kind of our spammable, right? You can try the other morph here if you want to, but I kind of like end cap mainly for the reef passive. This is definitely very valuable as this helps our offstat resource. So it definitely helps a lot with our overall stamina sustain as we're always light attack weaving. So it's up to you on your ultimates. You can do in cap, you can do soul tether, you can do a meteor, you can even do vampire ultimate, you can do dawnbreaker. I'm gonna test dawnbreaker probably, but overall you're gonna be more uh, satisfied I think with in cap more often than not than probably dawnbreaker or tether. Tether's mainly good to kill groups of people that is very strong in that regard. But overall, I've found the more value in end cap than in tether in some circumstances. Obviously, there's caveats to both, but I just found the most value in end in, in cap because I can actually kill people uh, with that ultimate. Um, rapid regeneration is a must. I think it's very strong on the mag blade with their overall healing power, with dark cloak, and with a healthy offering. It's just insane healing potential. Um, for our other skills, we have Shadow Image. I really like this. This is nice for overall movement. Um, as you will get pressured quite a bit sometimes, especially finding outnumbered. So this can definitely take a load off of you as you're really getting focused. And you can kind of kite around and, and kind of heal up a little bit with your heals. Uh, Race Against Time, I think it's a must as well, as this pairs very nicely with Shadow Image for overall mitigation. 
and getting out of snares and the critical damage and speed is very nice. Now there is always adjustments that you can do. You can change this out for a Mirage if you want to. Um, I'm definitely looking at this in, in place of Reaper's March, uh, Reaper's Mark, because it'll allow me for some more mitigation and it gives me that uh, major evasion. It's going to be preference on what you like, but there is a lot of different avenues you can go about uh, your build to fit your own play style. These are just some ideas and concepts that I've had that you know I've wanted to test or try. Um, just kind of make and mold this build uh, to your own liking, uh, pretty much is what I'm trying to say. Um, back bar ultimate, you can use lights champion, you can use soul tether, you can use, um, even this ultimate is actually pretty good to be honest. Uh, the consuming darkness into the, even the damage morph could be decent to a certain extent, but, um, this one's nice as well. You know, major protection, minor protection with dark cloak. A lot of healing it's actually pretty decent not gonna lie but tether's good uh the other morph of of rest of ultimate's fine either morph's okay um you can go vamp ultimate that's definitely something i do want to test um but i do f find more overall value from using the rest of ultimate sometimes as it's good for bgs and stuff like that to actually heal your allies this is just what i've been testing and kind of what i like obviously adjust the things accordingly to what you want to So let's talk about um, why we're using dual wield and, and the importance of actually like, you know, you could use a staff if you want to, but I just think we're going to get more value from dual wield. So dual wield gives us the twin blade and blunt passive, which gives us 1650 extra armor penetration uh, for each mace that we have. And we are using two maces. So this gives us, I guess, about 3300 uh, penetration. Plus, we got the sharpen trait here. Plus, we have a Nernhone main hand. The reason why Nernhone is better than 2H and better than a staff in my opinion as you get the best of both worlds of high pin with also getting the extra nern honed weapon damage because this is irrelevant of, of the weapon you have on if you have a 2h if you have a 1h you're still going to get the same value you also have access to more weapon and spell damage from the dual wield expert so that's going to give you overall more more damage then you have access to two glyphs which gives you access to two different status effects vulnerability five percent damage increase and the defile giving a healing reduction on your opponent so definitely i highly recommend dual wield if you can get it you can definitely change to a staff or 2h if you don't have dual wield but you're going to get the most bang for your buck and overall damage and and all of that with dual wield in my opinion let's go over the champion points so for my slottables we are using focus mending mastered arms deadly aim and duels rebuff um, this is what I prefer. I, I really like this uh, extra healing potential. It is very strong on the Magblade, as every single one of our heals are pretty much single target. So, definitely very, very strong. For the Red Tree, we have Celerity, uh, Survival Instincts, Pain's Refuge, and Sustained by Suffering. Uh, no brainer uh, for a for pretty much all my builds at this point. This is how I run my CP. Um, a quick little tip here: make sure you put ten points into here. Um, in a TLDR version uh, of this explanation, the, what this does is this reduces the duration of status effects. And to take advantage of this passive fully, the status effects is what gives you the core combat cost reduction. So as long as you have a status effect on you, you get this cost reduction. So the longer they last on you, the more cost reduction you get. That's just a quick little uh, quick tip, uh, I, I guess a pro tip uh, per se. But definitely only put 10 points into here and then it obviously max out your slaughterables. Um, this is just what I like. You can adjust it to your own liking and preferences if you want to. For the red tree, it's really, or for the green tree, it's really irrelevant. Just do whatever you like. Just make sure you get uh, Breakfall and Step S Enchantment. That's pretty much it. Other than that, uh, anything else really doesn't matter in the green tree. So let's go over buff stats really quickly here. Um, so overall, um, this is our kind of our semi, I, I guess, just barely buffed with magma. Nothing crazy here. Um, so we're going to proc our spell, uh, spell damage buff. Get in combat. So here with a clever alchemist up, we're about 5,400 damage. Definitely pretty decent. So with our calories up or with our five sacks of merciless, we're about 5,900 spell damage at this point. Uh, and you see our max stats with death dealers keeps climbing so we got pretty decent stats here uh overall mitigation 
isn't the highest, but we do have a lot of healing potential, guys. Keep that in mind with the healthy offering. This thing is insane. Um, it, it's just an obscene amount of, of healing potential that you have on this build. It's kind of obnoxious. So let me show you uh, my fully buff stats as, as my death dealers uh, gets fully procced. So we're getting up past the 22k stamina, 34k health, and 34k magic. Definitely very, very strong. I think we're pretty much there. Oh, we're still getting stats. We good now? I think we're good. All right, let's get my um, spec bow up. All right. So back bar stats, front bar stats. Um, and then we have, I guess we can show our buffed heal, 17K, I think it is, to, a, to an extent. We just got great stats, guys. I mean, you can't you can't complain about these. Uh, great overall, you know, pen, great recovery, great max stats with max magicka and health. Overall, I really like this build. I mean, this is top. I, I mean, I had a lot of fun on my mag blade. I, I'll say that right now. It wasn't like OP like Stan Blade is, but it's definitely a uh, very strong. So that's pretty much it for the stats. Um, nothing crazy, crazy, but it's definitely very, very strong. With your overall burst heal this this thing is insane guys uh, let me tell you right now you will love mag blade with this new burst heal if you ever played mag blade before and are used to the just the sheer amount of choking aspect of your healing uh, as you just basically smother out with your dark cloak and your rapid regen you're gonna love this healthy offering it's insane guys so that's pretty much all for the build uh, we went over gear cp race mundus um skills all of that so let's get into some gameplay and let me show you how this build plays in action so here we have the first clip on the mag blade now we're going to talk about the combos we're going to talk about what buffs you need to keep up your rotation and all that jazz uh, in this clip but first of all uh when you see people stacking up like this and you have tether on this is where you can get really happy pop that soul tether stun three of them uh hit them with a concealed weapon kill one kill two and there's a third one with the last concealed weapon live stack weave now, for your combos, you want to make sure you're always light attack weaving with your concealed weapons because this will proc your calories. This is the whole burst combo in the first place. So make sure you're always light attack concealed weaponing. And then eventually you will proc your spec bow or your, your merciless resolve, whatever you want to call it. Uh, sometimes people will try to roll dodge it and they'll try to preemptively kind of get out of it. Just kind of condition your opponent. This is going to just take a little bit of experience and overall time played on the class to really understand how to use this effectively. Sometimes it's a, it's a guess game on if they're going to roll dodge or not. But your best combo is just this right here. Soul Tether into a Spec Bow. That's just so clean, so fast. Um, that's how you're going to kill most people with Soul Tether. And in the next clips, we're going to go into the BGs uh, with the um, end cap. So going to explain how to use both you pretty much use them the exact same way uh to an extent you know but your soul tether is obviously going to be more aoe but this guy comes up here we hit him with a with a calrians uh and he's roll dodging with uh he rolled dodge then we hit him with that um uh, could see a weapon we got another guy here we got this dk back here helping us trying to hold down this keep as much as uh, as much as we can gonna rebuff here hit him last that can see a weapon last that can see a weapon he's trying to jump behind those those little stairs there people are getting rezzed Trying to just kill as many people as we can. Uh, so we got this DK here. We're going to hit light attack concealed weapon. Hit him with a 7k concealed weapons. 6500. And then he uh, dies with the negate. So that is kind of pretty much it for this clip. It's just a bunch of healing after this. And then eventually reds come in and pour in. But I, I guess the, the biggest thing is make sure you hit your mark on them first. If you're trying to focus person one person down. And then try to you know get your your spec bow up and always try to lie attack conceal weapon now on swishy people this is definitely a, a really good kind of burst potential but against definitely tanky players you have to get a little bit more finesse in your overall gameplay and have to really kind of hide your burst until you can just do a wombo combo with a in cap or a tether into a calories into a spec bow into a conceal weapon it kind of gets a little bit complicated maglade is not for the faint of heart it's definitely one of the harder classes to x on but it has a lot more potential now with the overall healing potential 
uh, that since they got buffed. All right, so here we have the battleground. Now I'm not gonna commentate over this whole thing. I'm gonna kind of just explain, you know, our healing rotations and all that, as you guys can see some actual gameplay in the in the background. But when we're playing defensive, uh, you want to typically hit your dark cloak first and go into your uh, burst heal. What that'll do is that'll your your dark cloak will eventually get buffed by the minor mending, and you'll be able to you know get get a lot more healing from from your cloak. The, the Dark Cloak gives you the minor protection, and then you want to go into a rapid regen. And at that point, if you still need healing, uh, keep on spamming your healthy offering. That's going to be your best bet to overall survivability. Uh, make sure you have your shade down. This skill is so versatile. Uh, there's so many good plays that you can do with this thing. It's not even funny. Um, on my stream that I had, we had some good funny plays with it. Uh, it helps a lot for survivability, especially when you start getting pressured and people really start to chase you. You can do some funky stuff where teleport back up uh, to like a platform so people jump down and you can spread people out. It's very versatile on how you can use it and the better you get at this class, ultimately the better you can you know, use shade and try to burst people uh, with your overall movement. Now end cap is so nice to use. I really like it in BGs. Um, in open world PVP, I really prefer Soul Tether though. Uh, or even Dawnbreaker. I've been testing it uh, a little bit, and I kind of like DB too, um, to an extent. You know, both are both are fine. It's just going to be preference on what scenario you're in, and kind of what kind of players you're fighting. Because end cap is more for the one v threes, one v fours, anything more than that that you're taking a lot of pressure. Soul Tethers and Dawnbreaker is definitely going to be a lot better. Um, other than keeping up your merciless. Uh, make sure you keep your siphoning attacks up. That's definitely going to add a lot of sustain. Um, make sure you obviously have your spell damage buff, whether you're using spell power pots or you're going to be using degeneration. Um, there's several different avenues that you can go about playing the mag blade. It's really a lot of preferences and I I've changed a few things around. I've tried running camo hunter where Mark is and I've dropped the generation and I put, um, Mark target there. So there's a lot of avenues you can go about it. Uh, I haven't found an exact one I, I really like. There's, like I said, there's always caveats to each scenario. Um, I've been trying out spell fire pots. I've tried several different things on the mag blade over the past few days, but I've I've not came to an exact conclusion. This is just a very solid spec. You can alter the the gear and the build is not going to change. It's just really skills that you can really alter. Um, but here we're gonna have a good a good one v three one v four here in a second. Um, on the mag blade so we go over here to this red side light attack is a weapon light attack is a weapon with a spec bow uh, he's not healing i don't know why but he, he didn't heal uh, then we kill him now we're keeping our buffs up hitting our dark cloak hit our burst heal get that big minor mending um, we're gonna rebuff here with our siphon attacks hit that rapid region again get cc'd got this night blade i have the piercing mark on right now i'm trying to mark him um but, you know, we catch him with the end cap into a Calrians. That's the most deadly combo you have. If, if that lines up together, it's amazing. I uh, got this warden. He's roll dodging. Kill him. You got this little stamp sork here. Uh, and this uh, this other guy came up. So we're going to drop a end cap on him with a concealed weapon. Kill him. Uh, stun him with a uh, concealed weapon. Going to rebuff a little bit, taking a little bit of heat. I want to run out of resources a little bit. Going to kill him with concealed weapon. Mark him. Uh, this is when I realized I don't like piercing mark is because it literally lasted for three seconds And I was very irritated because I'm trying to mark that night, but again, but it just didn't work So we got this uh, warning coming back up here Calrian's procs into a end cap into a medium weave if you proc off balance on them It's sometimes better to medium weave to stun them rather than to hit a casey weapon again because you can get a little bit more damage So the mark finally worked that timing and we got that night blade We've basically just been farming this uh, whole red team uh, for, for a good few minutes here um, Just make sure your buffs are up. That's the biggest thing on mag blade um, And really try to utilize that end cap with the stun. It's very nice people who don't know how to counter it really uh, can get bursted very easily um, Against more skilled players. It's definitely gonna be a little bit more difficult Don't take for you know for granted like you're gonna be able to do this on a mag blade day one It's not gonna be like that. Okay, so there's a lot of scenarios that you know I got pressured quite a bit and died to seven, eight, nine, ten people, but that's just going to be a given. You're not going to really be able to do that on a mag blade like you can on a stand blade. 
it's just not going to happen. It's just it's just the reality. Um, but you could definitely do very well on the Magblade with this spec and build. Uh, I guarantee it. You guys will, will have a lot of fun. If you guys are, are at least kind of competent on Magblade, you guys will be, do just fine. Uh, and as you gain experience, you'll get better as well. So don't don't take that as uh, as you shouldn't try this build. Magblade, like I said earlier, it's not for the faint of heart. It's one of the harder classes because you have to the effort to kill on Magblade is a lot higher than several other classes, um, and you have to try to line up everything together and be really skilled with your overall movement and your and your burst potential. But that's pretty much all for this, I guess, kind of commentary and kind of really talking about the mag blade i hope you guys really like this build um i'm going to be playing at some on stream so if you guys want to come by after you guys watch this video i'm probably going to be streaming today i'm going to post this video on monday so i'm going to be streaming this evening um if you guys want to come by and check it out and i'll see you guys in the next one peace